to welcome to the Jurassic Park tour program. Before we get started, I'd like to see a show of hands of how many of you here today in the past have already been on the tour. Okay. Okay. So I see a few of you have already been on the tour in the past. It's, that, that's great. It's always good to see returning familiar faces. And as those of you who have already been here know, there's a few things that we have to go over before the official tour. The first thing we need to go over is the tour program itself. The second thing, safety protocols. Very, very important. And third and finally, general information about our glorious and magnificent dinosaurs that we have here at Jurassic Park. After we go over all of that, I will take your questions and then we will head out the door right behind you where there will be tour vehicles waiting and ready for you. Now, as you can hear outside, it is raining, but fear not. Rain does, does not deter the dinosaurs from doing what they do. So, you know, I know some of you may fear that you know, due to the rain, you won't see many dinosaurs. But that's, that's not true. Um, our dinosaurs here at Jurassic Park are quite happy and very active, no matter what the weather is. Now, you may ask, why are we going over all of this information? Well, that has to do with things that we learn from the incident here at the park back in 1993, uh, especially about safety protocols and keeping all of you safe and informed. And that's why also we'll be going over information about the dinosaurs even though in the vehicle there's an automated tour uh, system that tells you, you know, everything you need to know about each individual dinosaur. So, with that said, let's begin. Now, as you enter the tour vehicle, you'll have access to two pamphlets. Well, 
like so. The first one is just a general brochure, as well as a map. You open it up, and it has our park gates. Then you open the gates, and you'll find general information about the park. Now, if you open it up farther, you'll see a map of the park. Unfold this a little bit. And over here, and over here, you'll find map legends. This one will tell you information about the park, the tour program, uh, the buildings such as the visitor center, um, emergency bunkers, the ferry, etc. This legend here tells you what all of these little dots mean, and that's the species of dinosaurs and where they're located. So you'll be able to look at that further when you enter the vehicle. The next brochure we have is this one here. This will tell you about your night vision goggles that are provided under the seats as well as safety instructions and even though you can look at this yourself we're still going to go over them so if we open up this brochure you'll see it kind of is um, modeled and, and reads like a instruction pamphlet for an airline. Here's a drawing of the tour vehicles that all of you will be enjoying today. And as our previous owner and father of Jurassic Park, John Parker Hammond once said, spared no expense. And it's true. All right, so, number one, your night vision goggles are underneath your seat, shown here. And they'll be in a protective case. I do believe they're black. So. Um, number two. Put the goggles on and adjust the top and back straps to fit accordingly. Number three, press the on switch to on on the side of the goggles. The red indicator light on the front will turn on. Now, in the unlikely event, because we do charge them ahead of time, but if you come across a uncharged or low battery on your goggles, 
in the box that these come in will be a charger that you can plug in to the cigarette lighter. And number four, use the side zoom control to adjust the focus and field of view. It's really quite a simple process and very fun. I'm sure some of you that have already been here have used these. Yes, okay. But those of you who didn't, um, have any of you ever used Bank Vision Goggles before? some safety protocols while you're on the tour. All right, you'll see on the fences there will be a sign that looks like this. And that just states, warning, keep the windows closed at all times. There are a few dinosaurs, uh, one in particular, the Dilophosaurus, that can actually spit at you, so you know, keep the windows up. First safety protocol, heavy objects. such as luggage, or even the night vision goggles themselves. Please do not make any sudden movements. All right. You know, don't, don't try to rock back and forth the uh, tour vehicle. Because just like in an airplane, you know, luggage can cause some serious injury. Do not use night vision goggles in the daytime. They, they could do some serious damage to your eyes, maybe even cause blindness. So please only use the night vision goggles at night. Two, do not leave the vehicle under any circumstance. It is highly dangerous out there, especially when coming to the carnivore paddocks and pens. So please stay in the vehicle and remain seated. And last, do not feed the animals. least thing you want to do is provoke the dinosaurs. Carnivore or herbivore. They will defend themselves violently if necessary. So please do not throw food out from the window. Which brings us to rule number one. Always keep your windows closed. And that does it for safety protocols. So, if you follow these rules, these simple rules, most of them are common sense, then you will be safe, and you will enjoy your tour much better than if you'd break these rules and suffer the consequences.
Now, on to the dinosaurs that you will see today on the tour. As you can see behind me, these are just some of the dinosaurs that you'll see today on your tour. We have quite a few species, so, you know, it won't be bored. Uh, not boring, I mean, you'll definitely, you know, be amazed at how many species we actually have here. I know when I first uh, first got this job here, I was really surprised at how many species of dinosaurs the company has brought back from extinction. And I think you'll be amazed as well. All right, so I'm just going to use my little field guide here and we'll go over some general information. Just, just some random facts. That way you can get to know the dinosaurs a little bit better before you head out into the park. First, we're going to go over some carnivores. The first one on our list is the Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, for a better example, we have one of our models. Normally quite large. Uh, picture you being about, uh, let's say, about that high towards him. Quite an impressive species. Yes. make noise, yes. It does roar. But uh, I'm not going to do that. Anyways. Tyrannosaurus rex. Carnivore. Weighing seven tons. 16 feet tall and 42 feet long. Quite impressive. Description. A bipedal carnivore with a massive skull balanced by a long, heavy tail. Has large, powerful hind limbs and short, kind of funny, but unusually powerful for them, kind of like this. With two clawed digits, so like this. He goes around, yeah. Kind of funny, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's an interesting fact. The Tyrannosaurus Rex can and has been clocked at speeds of up to 32 miles per hour. Oh. 
only short periods of time. But please don't, don't test that theory. Also, we have come to find out the T-Brex can only see moving objects. Moving on to the next. The Velociraptor. This dinosaur is extremely dangerous. It's almost like a pack of wolves in its time. The carnivore weighing 420 pounds, six feet tall, and 13 feet long. What that? Looks like a six foot turkey. This six foot turkey isn't on the lunch menu. Everything else is on its lunch menu. It has a flat snout, short forelimbs with large hand-like talons and a large sickle-shaped claw on each foot. And it's sharp, sharp as a razor. One blow with its foot will slice you to bits. They are a reddish brown colored body with dark markings and a light brown underbelly. Highly intelligent and are capable of leaping, setting traps, and communicating with other pack members. So, very dangerous. Okay, the final carnivore I'm going to tell you about is the one I mentioned before and the reason for keeping your windows open. Dilophosaurus. This dinosaur has some very interesting um, details or attributes, even. Just wait. That is a carnivore weighing 900 pounds, seven feet tall when fully grown, and 22 feet long. Two crested lizard bears crests on its skull, which is proportionary. You'll see here, this is a diagram of its skull. You'll see the crests right here. That's, that's not the only thing. 
It has a green colored body with dark markings. And its frill is a bright yellow color with red patterns. Kinda like a frilled lizard, if any of you have seen one of those. It has a frill that is kind of folded down like this around its neck. And when it gets threatened, it comes out like that. Kind of as a warning system to tell you know, a threat to back off. I'm dangerous. I'm going to spit. I almost left it out. A poisonous who spits its venom and its prey, causing blindness as well as paralysis. So it can eat at its leisure. Very interesting and very dangerous. So please, keep all this information in mind. And that is it for carnivores. Now on to the more friendly, but still to be taken as serious, herbivores. This dinosaur is a living, breathing tank. And you'll find out why. Herbivore, weighing eight tons. It's a heavy dinosaur. 5.6 feet tall. as tall as me and 23 feet long fused lizard quadrupedal has a broad robust body wide head with a low skull with two horns pointing back from the head as well as two horns below pointing backward. And I'll show you on our example in just a moment. Coloration is usually dark gray. with lighter gray horns and light grayish brown legs and underside. Normally a slow moving animal, yet able to make quick movements when necessary. Let me show you some things that the information sheet does not tell us. If we take a look at this model of an 
Ankylosaur. You'll see some things that you didn't hear me mention. And some things that I did. Like the horns on the head. If you see here, here's the two horns that I was talking about on the top and the two horns underneath. Okay. And then if you take a look at its armored plating, surrounded by jagged horns on each side. Extra protection. As well as some smaller, bumpier horns on its back. Now, you may be wondering, what is this? What is this ball on its tail? That, ladies and gentlemen, is its defense mechanism. When it feels threatened, or is fighting for dominance, it will use this tail as a club, smashing it into the threat. Yes. That's a very good question. Why is this model blue? Well, some of the younger uh, Ankylosaurs, kind of like a, uh, a baby deer. You know how a baby deer, when it's young, has spots all over. It's kind of the same thing here. A lot of the younger Ankylosaurs are actually blue color. And then as they grow, yeah, they get the, the gray color. Sometimes they stay this color, surprisingly. We have one, and uh, I do believe this model is uh, based on this particular Ankylosaur um, that we call Bumpy. He's kind of a, a runt of the litter, and uh, one of his horns on his head is uh, asymmetrical. He's one small horn and one large horn, so we call him Bumpy. But anyway, that's the Ankylosaur. a herbivore weighing 12 tons, 7 feet tall, 30 feet long. It's a, it's a nice sized dinosaur. A quadrupedal, but has a large bony frill around its neck. A little big frill. Three horns on the skull and a four legged body resembling that of a rhinoceros. Coloration is usually a reddish brown body, 
limbs and tail with light gray horns. As you can see with our model, here we have the reddish brown coloration, the large frill around the neck, kind of working as a shield when they're fighting. Again, either fighting a threat or fighting for dominance. And they use these, these three horns on their head. Almost like a bull. And sometimes, when fighting, they will buck their head like this. Kind of like giving an uppercut. So, you go. It'll scare you, even though it's a herbivore. But, on to the next. I have uh, two more dinosaurs I want to tell you about before I set you all loose. So, just bear with me. weighing 28 tons, 13 feet tall, and 25 feet long. The Stegosaurus is quite an intimidating herbivore. Large, heavily built quadruped with rounded back, with broad, upright plates, short forelimbs, long hind limbs, and a tail tipped off with spikes. So, you can imagine what those are used for. We'll get to that. Coloration is a green, body with brown plates exhibiting a paler center. It uses their spikes on their tail for defense against predators. And stegosaurs love feeding off low-lying bushes and shrubs. Let's take a look at a model of the stegosaur. So, here you can see the plates. It's 
not exactly quite known yet what all they're used for, but one thing's for sure, they can definitely be used for protection you know, from a carnivore trying to bite down on its backside. Then we also have the tail with the very sharp spikes on the end. And it uses its tail like so. Just slapping it back and forth. Hitting anything that's in the tail's path. So, if you're coming across the, the stegosaur, stay away from its tail. Probably be a good idea. One more dinosaur before you begin your tour. And that is one of our biggest herbivores here at Jurassic Park. Weighing 28 tons, 42 feet high, and 59 feet long. It's a, it's a very, very large dinosaur. Quite impressive. Just, just wait till you all see one of these magnificent dinosaurs out there on the tour. They will take your breath away. Brachiosaurus is a quadruped with a small skull, a long neck, a large trunk with a high ellipsoid cross-section, a long muscular tail, and slender columnar limbs, usually a grayish-brown color with a creamy underside. And here we have a model with the Brachiosaur in all of its glory. Even the model is quite large. You can see it's extremely long neck. And what that's used for is getting up in the high trees to feed on leaves. It's quite a uh, an interesting accessory. muscular legs and a very large muscular tail. Now, if we take a look 
I don't know how many of you can see this, but if we take a look at its teeth, they're kind of rounded in a way. And this is actually perfect. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Well, I think we're in luck. The rain has stopped, at least from what I can hear. So I think your tour will be just that much better. Thank you for allowing me to take your time and to share this information with you. I hope you enjoy your tour and if you will all just walk right out that door, single file, and you'll be directed to your tour vehicle. On behalf of myself, as well as Engine Corporation, thank you for visiting Jurassic Park. And please, stay safe and enjoy your tour.